Alright, and welcome back to my Bloodborne Blood Level 4 Guided Walkthrough. In the previous episode, we upgraded our Saw Cleaver to plus 7, and we took down the Shadows of Yarnum. But before we continue on to Rom the Vacuous Spider, we are first going to kill one of the Yarrow Ghoul Hunters to the left of the Grand Cathedral, specifically the one with the Nitrous. And it might be best to not disturb the one with the Rifle Spear. Now the reason for killing this hunter is that he drops a set of bolt papers, and as you probably know, Rom is weak to bolt. However, having said that, it's actually not all that important on BL4 to begin with, as you will see when we get to Rom. Well, basically because I mess up the second phase anyway, doing way less damage than I intended to do. So in that sense, the bolt paper didn't really make that much of a difference to begin with. Of course, that's not what you want to happen, but regardless, for the sake of this walkthrough, that is actually a good thing. Because it allows me to show you how to deal with Rom's third phase when you mess up at the second. The point is that Rom is extremely dangerous for a low level character during the third phase. And therefore you want to nearly deplete her health before she even enters her third phase. Or there are even ways to completely skip it. But in the end, a game like this is not about having things going exactly your way all the time. It's also about how to deal with your mistakes when you make them. Well, unless they are lethal mistakes, because then you can't really do anything about it anymore. You know what I mean. But there is a way to make Rom's third phase rather simple, although it's a bit on the cheesy side. Regardless, at the very least, it is smart to have 10 Molotov cocktails in your inventory, and it's even better if you also have some oil urns, because we're going for ranged attacks during the third phase. I suppose that Bone Marrow Ash will work as well, but your gun is going to be quite weak, and in my case I hardly even leveled it up at all. Now, when it comes to Bergenworth itself, you don't want to have to do this with enemies on your trail of course, but later on it might be helpful to come back here to kill Master Willem for the Eye Rune, in case you want to farm for Blood Jams in the Nightmare of Mansus or in the DLC. Also, interesting detail about the NPC in Bergenworth, it can be hard to do on BL4, but if you walk all the way to the edge of the lake and have that hunter attack you, if you dodge and do a quick combo, you can knock her into the water. And the strange thing is that this will actually transport her to Rom's boss room, so she won't die until you jump down as well, at which point you both come falling down, but you will survive and the NPC will automatically die. So that is at least an easy way to take her down. Sort of easy at least. But to be honest, I choose not to mess with her. Because she's actually more of a boss than Rom is. Okay then, the boss fight against Rom. As you know, Rom is inactive during the first phase, so just focus on the spiders. Remember that you need to attack them from behind or from the side, because their heads are armored. If you see a spider about to jump towards you, if you act fast, you can just walk to the side to avoid it, and then attack from behind. Same applies to when a spider does a head dive. The really important thing is to keep your eye on your surroundings, because individually these spiders aren't much of a threat, the spider that you are currently attacking isn't a real danger, the other spiders around you are. So always be ready to move out of the way when you see one of the other spiders getting ready for an attack. And of course, spiders that stray away from the rest of the group are easy targets. And that will especially be important during the second and third phase, when you constantly have to dodge the meteor shower. In essence, this fight is not so much difficult as that it requires a lot of patience and constant attention during what is guaranteed to be a long fight. Without skipping phases, that is. Okay, so now the spiders are gone, Rom is helpless until she disappears, now, what I actually did wrong in this fight is that I was way too used to doing this fight with a plus zero weapon because of all the no hunter's dream attempts. But because I do so much more damage now, that left Rom with less health after the first phase. Meaning that she almost immediately disappeared when I attacked her during the second phase, leaving her with substantially more health than I intended during the final phase. But don't worry, as I said, there is a backup method, which I in fact also used during the no hunter's dream run. Anyway, when it comes to the spiders during the second phase, even more patience is required. Because now we have to constantly keep an eye on Rom. Because whenever you see her raising her head, that means that a meteor shower is coming. And that means that you need to immediately start running, preferably in a straight line. That way all the meteors will hit the ground behind you. 
However, this is extremely important. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes, Rom will immediately do a second meteor shower after the first one. So always focus the camera directly on Rom again after you dodge a meteor shower. Otherwise you won't be able to react fast enough if she follows up with a second one. And of course, general rule in Souls games, don't get greedy. If you see your head rising when you are attacking a small spider, don't finish your attack, immediately start running. To emphasize again, this fight is all about patience. Okay, so here I mess up my attack. Not only did Rom have less health and therefore teleported more quickly, I messed up the entire combo. The point is that you can keep doing damage until she has completely vanished. And if you stagger her, it will actually cancel her teleportation. So in principle, it is possible to skip an entire phase. Although this can be hard to actually achieve on BL4. Anyway, now we just have to deal with it. So the third phase is mostly the same as far as the spiders are concerned. But be aware that when you get close to Rom, she can also make meteors shoot up out of the water, or she can do this giant AoE explosion. 
In the former case you can see the danger zones on the ground and in case of the explosion just move far out of the way. But the real problem with this phase is when you actually get rid of all the spiders. Because this time Rom can do this stomp attack that is almost unavoidable and will one shot you on BL4. So it's extremely risky to get close to her with such a short life bar. It's not impossible but it really sucks to have to do this long fight all over again. Meaning that you probably want to play it safe. So once the small spiders are dead we are going for a different approach. Alright, so now we're going to use our Molotov cocktails. However, you can't just randomly throw them, because they do less damage when you hit Rom's head. And she is constantly facing you. So instead, what you want to do is to bait her to either roll over, or to raise her head for the AoE explosion. That way, when you throw, you can hit her body. Now, oil urns can help too, of course. But the point is that you don't want to run out of Molotov cocktails before she's dead. Now, an alternative approach would be to free aim, but if you are anything like me, <laughs> chances are that you miss a few. However, if you have steady aim, it is far less risky as you won't be in much danger of getting caught in our AoE attacks. Alright, so that was Rom the Vacuous Spider. And now that we have access to Yara Ghoul, it's time to collect bloodstones again. As this area is full of bloodstone chunks, more than enough in fact to easily upgrade our saw cleaver to plus 9. And in case you choose to run past enemies like me, 
Never run away from enemies with guns in a straight line. Getting shot is bound to be a one-hit kill. Stick to the left to avoid the amygdala laser and remember that if necessary you can stun these regular enemies by rolling into them. And immediately to the left of the lantern you can find a scurrying beast. That will give us the necessary bloodstone chunks for a plus 8 weapon. We even have 2 chunks left so that means that we need 6 more after that for plus 9. Alright, now if you choose to run past everything again, it's best to first drop down and kill the guy with the gun, otherwise you might get shot in the back. Now because everything is going to chase me, I'm going to run immediately towards the shortcut and take the elevator halfway up. And once I've picked up all the bloodstone chunks there, I will go back down again and by then everything should have de-aggroed already. We get two more bloodstone chunks from this scurrying beast and around the corner behind the skeleton wolf creature or whatever it is, you find a third one. Actually if you kill it there is a small chance of it dropping a bloodstone chunk as well. Although it's not really necessary, you can find more than enough in this area. Okay, be careful here. Those weird cart riding creatures can one shot you, so carefully inch your way towards the shiny on the floor and move out of the way again so the enemy won't jump on top of your head. And then the final two can be found behind another one of these creatures. There's also some bolt paper to the right, but uh, as you can see, it's not really that safe to pick it up. 
Okay, so now I'm going back up the elevator again. But before going back to the hunter's dream, I'm going through that weird teleporting bathtub thing. Because on the other side, you can find a powerful blood gem. So we might as well place that on our saw cleaver before we fight the next boss. Alright, my strategy for the One Reborn is actually really, really risky, because as you will see, I am multiple times on the verge of death, and in a way I'm relying on the rally system to keep me alive. However, my goal is to build up the beast blood meter and then stagger the boss. And once he falls down, the fight is basically already over, because he will hardly even get the chance to get back up again. First objective is of course to take out the bell maidens. However, be careful, the boss can still hit you when you are on the upper floor. So always move away towards the wall after killing each bell maiden. And also be careful to not knock them off the edge. You don't want them to be still alive and close to the boss himself. Alright, now for the risky part. Use beast blood and bolt paper and first focus on getting a couple of transform attacks in. Preferably on his larger legs because those protrude and are therefore safer to hit. Now when you see the red glow above you, make sure to keep moving because then blood and gore will fall down and that can kill you quite quickly. However, the rally system might save you if you get hit when you hit the boss. After a few transform attacks, the boss will fall down and your beast blood meter is almost filled up. So now attack that large skeleton that functions as sort of a head, because that's the boss's weak point. Keep attacking and once he gets back up, you should be able to take him out before he can even attack again. Okay then, that's it for today. 
Next episode, we'll continue into the Nightmare of Mansus to get the Blood Rock, and then it's time to take on some of the optional bosses. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and don't forget the notification bell, and stay tuned for the next episode.